All right, Hunter, so right off the top, man, you are one of the most creative route runners that I see playing football anywhere. How do you think about creating space when you're running routes? Yeah, it's a lot of backyard football, to be honest with you. I grew up playing a lot of backyard football and um, a lot of sports growing up and, you know, playing with angles, whether it's soccer, basketball, trying to create that space. And so, um, you know, trying to take that and what I've done my whole life and just fit it in the parameters of an NFL football game, really, and get the trust of Derek and see the same way him as him so that, you know, when the opportunity presents itself to uh, go out there and make a play. And your pops was a high school football coach too, right? So like, when did you first remember falling in love with the game? Yeah, my dad was a high school coach. He uh, played college football as well. Um, had some older brothers that played high school football and um, and football growing up, really. So, uh, you know, just in the backyard, really, uh, all growing up. I'm, I have 60-something first cousins, and so every Thanksgiving, Christmas, whenever we get together, you know, we're out in the front yard playing football from sunup to sundown. And that's really where I fell in love with it. And um, it's just been fun to be able to play it all these years and so many I've met so many people, interesting people. Um, me and you were just talking about Eric McLean and um, I met him at Clemson and you're friends with him. And, you know, the world's such a smaller place when it, when you involve football. What did this trip to the playoffs represent to you and to this team? Uh, not much unless we can win a game, you know, uh, it's good to be here. And it's something the Raiders haven't done since 2016. Uh, but it's not good enough just to get here. We got to go out and play a good game and um, try to go advance and one week at a time. So, so when you watch other wide receivers around the NFL, which guy do you try to study the most? Yeah, I love watching Cooper Cup. Uh, he's so explosive. Um, he does a great job of setting people up. Kind of, he kind of plays outside of his frame a little bit more than a lot of people and something that I try to emulate and try to do. Um, he's just a smart guy and um, I love watching him play. And uh, my favorite growing up, with Sammy Watkins and we're two totally different receivers. You know, he's a lot faster, a lot bigger than I am, but uh, he was my favorite player growing up and I wanted to be just like him. Man, when we were out there at the game, I saw you and Derek Carr pull into the stadium together. How long have you two been carpooling to the games together? How'd that start? <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, you know, the wives have to have the parking passes. So we always carpool uh, to the games. My rookie year, we actually, started doing it in my very first game in Oakland, you know, we go through the gate and uh, we get ready to go pull into the player parking area. And this guy stops us and he looks at me and Derek and he wanted to wish Derek a happy, uh, a great season. You know, it's going to be a great year. And he looks at me and asks if I was his son. And he was like, do you bring your son with you today? <laughs> and, uh, we got a kick out of that. But, uh, you know, we started my rookie year and I've been going strong since. What do you think it was that first made you two friends? Um, a lot of things. Uh, I think our love to compete, our love for sports, not just football. Um, it doesn't matter if we're, you know, on the plane playing cards or, you know, playing Rocket League on the, um, on the uh, Nintendo Switch or whatever it is, you know, uh, we just love to compete and we love to have a good time. We don't need a lot of things around us. We'll make up a game. And um, I think that's something that's brought us together and something that, you know, we bond over. I heard you two are also teammates on the uh, Fortnite battlefield as well. So I'm curious what kind of a soldier, what kind of a teammate on the battlefield Mr. Carr is. We are, no, he's, he's, he's definitely the A player. Uh, I like to think of myself as a B player. <laughs> Nate, Nate Peterman as a C player and uh, Brandon Jones, one of his, uh, Derek's friends is the D player. But uh, we, uh, we always have a good time. And, uh, you know, I always have to give them the good gun. So if, you know, there's some good guns and there's a scar out there and gold guns, I got to give it to him because, you know, he's the one throwing me the passes. What is it about video games? What does it do for you mentally when you're in the heart of a playoff push and doing all this crazy stuff in your day-to-day -day life? What does that do for you mentally? Yeah, I mean, we don't – we try not to play too, too much during the season. But, um, you know, it just it – just, relaxes you and um, it lets you bond and just really get on the headset and talk. And, you know, we're on the, we're on the headset a lot talking about plays um, and talking about how we can do certain things and run certain routes. And so it's really, you know, jumping on a zoom call talking about routes, but at the same time, you're, you're trying to compete as well. 
and you're getting set to come in here to Cincinnati. You just played this team not too long ago. What do you remember about the matchup with that defense? Yeah, I remember they uh, shut us down pretty good. They did a great job. Uh, I remember after that game thinking, you know, if we want to, if we want to go to the playoffs, if we want to go to the Super Bowl, if we want to, you know, make a push, we got to play better than we did that week. And so they're a really good defense. They're talented. They was a, they had a lot of, uh, to do with why we played that way. And so hopefully we can tinker some things and change some things up and uh, have some success against them. It seems like Rich Bisaccia, the head coach, has been sort of the perfect fit for all that this year has been. Why has he been the right man to lead you through this season? Yeah, he's just a leader of men. He cares about us. You know, it's tough to care about people on a personal level in the NFL because you have so many moving parts and so many people coming in and out. But he does a great job of, you know, connecting with us and uh, if someone gets cut or someone goes to a different team, he always checks in, makes sure they're all squared away. And that's the little things that, you know, he does better than everybody else. And, you know, we know that he cares about us. And, and then he's just, you know, has the perfect thing to say at the right times. Um, no matter how it is, he can connect with people. And uh, we need to get that narrative started to, uh, to maybe win a game here and he can remove that interim tag. I hear you, man. And we were down on the field before that game, and I'm watching Darren Waller warm up. That's got to be one of the most unique-looking football players at any position that I've ever seen. How does he free you up with the things that he's able to do playing that tight end position? He's a monster. Uh, he's a total monster. He, he attracts double teams, even triple teams at times. Um, he's just a stud. And so to have a guy like that on the field where, you know, for me, you know, they don't have an extra guy to spy me or alert me or, you know, be able to go in there and, uh, and, and, and double coverage, especially on third down, it really free, free some things up. Um, and just to have a leader like him on the sideline, he's a special person and a guy that a lot of us on the Raiders look up to. And so um, he's, he's great on the field, but off the field, he's just as good, if not better. So I've just been enjoying watching your career for so long, going back to Clemson now to the NFL. And, and you're 5'10", 185 pounds. You ran a 4'5", 940. So you're giving a lot of guys hope. When you get a yeah. chance to reflect and look at your career, how do you think you've made it this far? Just by keeping things simple. I'm not trying to do too much, not trying to be someone I'm not. Um, yeah, just going out there and having a lot of fun. You know, having fun like we talked about earlier – you know, I'm in the NFL now, but it really feels like I'm out there and playing football in the backyard with my friends and family, uh, you know, not take it too serious. You know, there's a lot that comes with and a lot of pressure put on you, but uh, keeping it simple and just having a lot of fun, um, you know, life's going to be there after. And so um, just enjoy this moment. And that's uh, that's been the key. And you're a dad now, too. How has fatherhood changed your perspective as you go through life? Yeah, it's been unbelievable. It really has. Uh, as a guy, you always want a, a son, you know, first, but um, we had a daughter and it has been unbelievable. It's been the coolest experience. I wouldn't have traded. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, she's she's finally progressing into walking and talking and um, just just coming home every day from from, you know, football. Uh, you never have a bad day. You get to come home and be with your wife and daughter. And it just puts great perspective on everything. And Coach Sweeney, man, going all the way back, he's one of those men who's just a, is a life coach, a football coach at the same time. What are some of your favorite teachings from him that you still use to this day? Yeah, Coach Sweeney is an unbelievable person. Um, love him to death. Uh, they're going to be a lot better next year than they were this year. I can promise you that. But uh, he, you know, he just works on getting better every day, uh, try to get better every single day. Uh, best is a standard is kind of their motto at Clemson, and he's the epitome of that. And the thing I love about Coach Sweeney is uh, no matter if he's coaching football or if he was a preacher or if he was a businessman, he would be unbelievable at it. He'd be great at it just because he, you know, he, he focuses on getting better every day and he's good to people and he cares about people. And I think those are the three ingredients that make him special and his priorities are in line. And um, he's, he's very good at, you know, living those out. How many Clemson teammates do you have now on the Raiders? It seems like there's just been one after another year after year that goes in there to play for Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, hopefully that's you know been part of our success. Uh, we got Clee and Trayvon and John Simpson, and hopefully we can get a few more this year and just keep it coming because um, we got a lot of a lot of special guys down in Clemson. 
When, when was the first moment where you really felt like I can compete and I can make plays on an NFL field? Um, you know, it sounds weird, but really my redshirt freshman year at Clemson, uh, I went up against McKenzie Alexander. I went up against J. Ron Curse. And that's one of the reasons why I went to Clemson. I could have gone to App State. I could have gone to Walford. I could have gone to Furman, some of these smaller schools. But I knew my end goal, I would, you know, my dream was to play in the NFL. And if I couldn't do it at Clemson, I couldn't do it in the NFL. So redshirting, um, for me, I got to go against those guys. And we had the number one scoring defense in the nation that year at Clemson. And if I could get open against them, and those were future you know, NFL guys, then I could get open in the NFL. How do you think starting as a walk-on there has influenced your mindset even to this day? Yeah, I, I didn't come in as a five-star. Um, thankfully, I, uh, I appreciated being a walk-on. I appreciated nobody expecting anything from me. I didn't know the university anything. You know, they didn't pay for my scholarship right away. And so um, I could go out there and play free, play for, you know, my teammates and just have the time of my life. And that's what I did. And um, to this day, you know, being a walk on, I, I still forget I was drafted. I feel like a free agent just because you have that walk on mentality, <laughs> yeah. you know, throughout throughout your whole life, really. And so um, you feel like an underdog. You feel like you have to be the hardest worker or else everyone else is going to pass you up. How often do you and Derek as friends talk about the opportunity to put together a Super Bowl run there in Vegas? Yeah, we uh, we've been dreaming about that since we we came to Vegas. We're going to jump in his car on the sunroof of the Lombardi when we do it. And we're going to go right down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Las Vegas yeah, yeah. So we talk about it a, a good amount and we're going to play a lot of golf that offseason. I can promise you that. Yeah, what would be the first three things you do if you win it? Number one, you go down sunset, you go down the strip right there with the trophy. What's two and three? I mean, uh, two, we're going to shoot our shot with Tiger Woods. He's a Raiders fan. Uh, try to get a foursome with him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then number three, uh, probably just jump on Fortnite for a week straight. <laughs> well, Hunter, we really appreciate this, man. Can't wait to have you here in Cincinnati. It's going to be a great game on Saturday afternoon. Thanks and safe travels, man. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.